afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today at Virtual Open Week for our Computing at ANU session. My name is Emily O'Hara and I'm the Domestic Student Recruitment Senior Officer at the ANU College of Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, today it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Tony Hosking to give the presentation today. Thank you, Emily. Um, well, I'd like to welcome you to computer science at the ANU. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm speaking in front of the building which houses both mathematics and computer science at the ANU within the uh, engineering precinct here at the university. Um, I'll begin this proceedings just by uh, acknowledging uh, the traditional owners of the many lands on which we meet today um, and particularly pay my respects to elders past and present. Um, Again, welcome. Um, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about uh, computer science at the ANU. Uh, I am the uh, director of the Research School of Computer Science, so I'm the one who heads up uh, all of the activities here at the ANU around computer science, including uh, the, the courses that we offer here as undergraduate courses, the masters and, and PhD programs that we offer here, um, and the research activities that we have here at the ANU. Um, I will be giving a presentation shortly and I will encourage people to consider using the uh, Q&A um, uh, box that's available to you in the Zoom panel. Um, this will give you an opportunity to get your questions in early. I know there's always a bit of a rush to ask questions at the end, um, but if you get your questions in early, we'll curate those questions. Emily will, will help to uh, bring them to the top for me to answer at the end. Um, as we as we uh, end out this proceedings, but I will be giving you some uh, information about the um, about the programs that we have here at the ANU. All right. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring up some slides. All right. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our various programs that we have on offer here at the ANU in computer science. Um, and I'll uh, ask that if you have questions, to please feel free to uh, bring those to us at the very end. So we actually have a very extensive activity base here. We have a lot going on, and um, I think we have some very interesting and unique programs of study uh, for students considering coming to the ANU. Um, so why would you want to come and study here at the ANU in computer science? Um, there are a number of things that we pride ourselves on. Um, first of all, the degrees that we offer are actually rather unique, I think, um, and they're intended to prepare students for the challenges that they'll face in the future not just the challenges that we face today, but in fact, to put you in a position where you can um, adapt to new technologies and changes that you will encounter throughout your careers uh, once you leave the ANU. So we're preparing you to be successful in a world that is changing. Um, very happy to say that we're the number two computer science department. I wish I could say that we were the number one computer science department, but that's not to say that we don't have many things going on here that are actually the best in of their kind at, in Australia and around the world. Um, we are well above world standard uh, in the assessments that the Australian Research Council operates against um, excellence for research in Australia, and we're one of only two uh, schools in Australia to have uh, ratings at that standard uh, in three areas, which in our case includes AI, uh, theory of com computation and computer software. Uh, we're also the host of the Australian Office of the World Wide Web Consortium, so we have a role in developing the future web, uh, which is an interesting place to be here in Australia, but also with what it allows us to do interacting with uh, other offices in the World Wide Web Consortium around the world. We have some interesting relationships um, with government, um, and one of those is the CoLab that we operate here at the, uh, the ANU. It's a part of our building that you just saw in the previous slides, uh, where we're focusing on um, shaping the nation's future in cybersecurity. We're a great place to innovate, to launch ideas, to launch startups, to launch your careers. Uh, we have a program called Tech Launcher, which I'll talk about a little bit further into this talk. Uh, but which gives you the opportunity to work on projects with uh, 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 customers, with clients, uh, out in business and in government, uh, which is a great place for you to launch uh, your um, future uh, careers in computing. 
We're also the home at the ANU to Gadi, which is Australia's uh, most powerful supercomputer. Super and I should actually say it's actually the most powerful supercomputer in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so we have access to some very high-end uh, supercomputing frameworks that uh, our students indeed also get to use in some of our courses. I'm going to tell you now a little bit about some of our programs. Um, so I'll start by talking about the Bachelor of Information Technology. Um, this is our base program. It's the one that allows students to combine um, a degree here in the Bachelor of IT with uh, other degrees at the ANU in the flexible doubles that the ANU offers. Um, and so it's a very flexible program that lets, gives you the opportunity to combine your studies with lots of other uh, uh, study at the ANU in different subjects. Um, there is an optional honours year available to the Bachelor of Information Technology that will take it from a three-year degree to a four-year degree, but that's not required. Um, as, a, as we all know, um, information technology is in fact everywhere. We use it every day. It permeates our lives. Um, we are meeting right now on the basis of all of the developments that have happened in the last uh, 50 years or so in computing and, and IT. Um, that allow us to actually meet in this virtual way right now. It's important to know that um, the Bachelor of Information Technology is not just us teaching you how to use existing technologies. Um, we certainly will be doing that, but we're also looking to prepare you to understand and, and develop the technologies of the future. And that means that we do more than just uh, take you to a particular piece of technology and, use, and teach you how to use it but that we actually also teach you the principles that underpin the development of that technology itself. Um, so it's a bit like uh, when you learn to drive a car, you don't necessarily learn to how, to how to fix the car. In this course, we actually open the bonnet, if you like, the hood for our American friends on the underlying technology so that you will understand how it's built and how it's developed and how it can be improved and perhaps innovations that can be made to it in the future. So this is a, a, a fundamentals in computing program that uh, allows you to deal with the progressive changes that we see on a daily basis across information technology and its um, interactions with our uh, social and human uh, activities. Here's uh, one of our uh, students in the Bachelor of Information Technology who can speak about the uh, things that he has been able to learn, the pathways that he sees into computing uh, from the programming side of it also, but, to the, but also to the business side, where students can actually get a sense of what it means to take the skills that they've developed in our programs into the workplace and to start deploying them in, in productive ways for their, for their, their uh, careers. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility in this program that really gives you the opportunity to, to learn what you are looking to uh, at the ANU. Our other undergraduate uh, computing program is the uh, Bachelor of Software Engineering, um, which is a four-year program. Um, it has an ATAR of 85, which has been lowered this year in response to the COVID crisis to uh, give students uh, uh, more flexibility in their um, in, enrolling at the ANU and coming to the ANU and studying here. Um, this is a four-year program, as I said, which has an honors component embedded into the program. So what is the Software Engineering Bachelor's about? It's about how to build effective systems, systems that um, uh, address complex problems that we see in a broad range of activities, whether it's transport or medicine or science. Uh, you'll, you'll have an opportunity to develop the skills that you need to be able to, to build these large projects uh, in teams um, with industry partners and with some work experience actually built into it as part of a uh, part of the program. Um, because it's a software engineering program, we're going to be teaching you the fundamentals of building software, but also the uh, ways in which you manage the projects, the, uh, the software engineering projects, in a way that will uh, ensure that they uh, come to completion on time and uh, to the specifications of the customers that uh, you're delivering to. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Tech Launcher. Tech Launcher is one of the things that springs out of our software engineering program, but it's available to all students in our programs. So here's Yaya, um, who's one of the students in our Bachelor of Software Engineering Honors program. 
uh, where she says that she's able to gain essential systems and design thinking skills. So this is thinking about the design of large projects um, and to get the confidence to explore engineering and computer science without the need for a double degree. So it's really a, a solid foundation in engineering skills, in design thinking, uh, in order to build software. We have another program called the Bachelor of Applied Data Analytics, um, which is another three-year program. <clears throat> it does have an optional honors year available to it. Um, this is a, uh, an ATAR 90 entry program, um, which is intended to get students to, to the place where they can uh, perform analysis on data uh, that will allow decisions to be made in uh, the critical uh, decision-making processes of government or business. Um, so we have a challenge these days. We're overwhelmed with the large amount of data that we have to be able to understand and make inferences from. So this program teaches students how to take data, to curate that data, to understand what it means to model that data. We're using statistics um, and also how, what implications it might have in domains such as the social sciences. But the skills that students gr uh, gain in this program are uh, critically available, are criti critically necessary for success in many settings such as business and finance and health and uh, government. Uh, so this is a, a unique program that uh, really does focus on being able to analyze and uh, uh, inform decision making based on large amounts of data. So Naomi here is a student of ours in Nevada. Um, she uh, says that it's perfect for those who have broad interests uh, because it's combining the sciences with the humanities and the arts to solve problems in those domains. Um, so her ver the versatility of this program is what she really likes. Um, it's something that allows her to uh, explore her interests and passions, uh, which in this case for her are solving so social problems, social issues, uh, using uh, data science techniques. The next program that I'll talk about is the a Bachelor of Advanced Computing. Uh, this is another of our four-year programs, which has an inbuilt honors uh, in, in that program. And this is a program that's intended to bring students to the cutting edge and even beyond the cutting edge in, um, in the new technologies that are emerging. Um, so uh, just as the BIT is in, uh, giving students the foundations for understanding those technologies and how they're constructed, the Bachelor of Advanced Computing endeavors to get students to the point where they're actually starting to develop some of these new technologies. Um, so given that computing touches every aspect of our lives these days, um, this gives you the opportunity to explore how to take technology to the edge and beyond. Um, in really changing the ways in which people interact, the way that people work, the way that people play, uh, and the way that, that people entertain themselves. Um, so there are a lot of aspects of, of uh, this program which give you a great foundation to go off into any number of different careers. Um, this can include things like predicting the efficiency of energy and renewable energy systems, the ways in which we can combine the uh, rooftop solar panels that we have on our houses together to form a community uh, electricity generation platform. So how do we actually combine those things uh, in optimal ways to harvest energy? Um, or even using machine learning that you might uh, uh, gain knowledge of in these courses to diagnose things like illnesses, uh, to be able to recognize uh, illnesses in CAT scans, um, in um, x-rays, and so on. So the program is designed to give you a solid foundation in computing techniques, and then also to allow you to specialize in a particular area uh, within our, um, our school. Um, as well as that, you'll get plenty of opportunities to uh, learn uh, professional skills, uh, work in teams, and to build your communication skills for your future career. Here's Tina. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to see Tina here because I taught Tina in her first year course here at the ANU. And I'm so happy to see that she's gone on to do the, the uh, Bachelor of Advanced Computing. Um, she's combining that with her Bachelor of Science. So she's actually doing a double degree here. Um, and she says that it's uh, that at ANU, there's really a multi multidisciplinary and big picture focus on research. 
that she actually sees that there's a lot of humanity in computer science. It's not just all technical stuff. It's not dry technical material, but actually the opportunity to take the technical skills that you learn and apply them in domains where there are lots of people involved and you get the opportunities to engage and interact and, and enjoy um, that opportunity to interact with, with lots of different disciplines. And she says, you don't realize this until you look beneath it. Um, and I think that's a really insightful comment. Um, it's easy to say that computing is a very narrow domain, but in fact, it's not. It pervades our lives. And just as it pervades our lives, we really do get the opportunities to interact with all sorts of uh, people in all sorts of domains um, as we exercise our computing skills. So that's a wonderful comment from her. We also have uh, a... a uh, a research and development stream for the Bachelor of Advanced Computing. Um, and this is an ATAR 98 scheme. So it's a, it's a very uh, competitive scheme to get into, but where students really, really do get brought right into the cutting edge. It's a place where students are, end up doing cutting edge research, not just at the end of their programs when they're working on their honors, but also involving themselves in research projects through their degree over the four years of that program. And I'm very happy to say that some of the students that I've taught in my first year course in the space of two weeks have gone on in this program to work with us in our research group uh, on interesting research problems right from their first year. So this is a great opportunity not just to do it um, at, at the end of the degree, but also weave it into your studies throughout your, uh, your study program. So um, as noted here, you'll get exceptional professional skills, including communication and teamwork. And it's also a great pathway if you're interested in going on to a research degree to get a taste of what research really is. Um, so students who are particularly interested in research will, will get that exposure in this, in this program. Here's Ethan. Um, he's one of our students in the Bachelor of Advanced Computing Research and Development. Um, he says that his degree enables him to try a lot of different research fields before choosing his honors, which is a great thing because it means you get a taste of different topic areas before you have to commit to a year long honors project. Those topic areas can include things like computer systems, uh, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, any number of different research areas within the school uh, will be an opportunity for you to actually learn about those and, and make choices along the way about what you really want to research during your honors year. And what's more, you get the opportunity to explore what interests you. And so the flexibility of that program is important. Uh, one thing that about all of our programs is that we have a number of majors and specializations that are available within the programs. Within the BAC programs, we have things like intelligent systems and computer systems and computer architecture or theoretical computer science. If you're interested in, in the underlying uh, logic that uh, drives uh, all of what we do in computing, you can actually learn about that in our logic courses. Uh, and well as, as well as that, we have uh, opportunities in data science as a specialization. In the BIT, we have similar sorts of uh, majors and specializations, majors including information systems, uh, software development, uh, cyber security uh, within that program. And students in the Bachelor of Software Engineering degree are, are not uh, prohibited from taking those specializations. In fact, they are optional within their program uh, to take those specializations or majors and minors from across the university using electives. So there's a lot of flexibility there as well. I should say something about Tech Launcher. So Tech Launcher is a, a program that grew out of our software engineering program, but is now heavily uh, subscribed by students from across our degrees not just our undergraduates, but also including our, our coursework master's students, where they go in and they work on a project that is of relevance to some local industry, not necessarily local industry, but also includes local government uh, and federal government, where students can actually work on real problems, real life problems with uh, projects that uh, deliver solutions that are valued by our partners in industry and government. And so uh, one of the things that we do every year is we have a, a showcase, a tech launcher showcase, uh, where students come and talk about the projects that they've been working on, uh, where they get to mix with uh, local companies, uh, people from local companies. Uh, it's a great uh, jobs pathway if you're looking for a job in future in the local uh, economy here in Canberra. It's a great opportunity for you interact, to interact with startups uh, within the local uh, Canberra um, startup scene. 
Um, and this is a real uh, opportunity, I think, for students to take the skills that they've learned and then deploy them in the real world, uh, which is at the end of the day, what we're really trying to get students to achieve here at the ANU. We have a number of um, clubs and associations here at the ANU. Uh, there are lots of opportunities for students to go beyond our university uh, boundaries and out into the community to engage and interact. We have students that go off to visit uh, places like the Commonwealth Bank. Here is the Computer Science Students Association with a picture of them in front of the Commonwealth Bank building. I think that's in Sydney. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we also have other, lots of other opportunities for students through our social groups, through the clubs and associations to engage, not just with our curriculum, but with uh, all sorts of fun stuff happening. So these clubs sponsor things like hackathons and um, capture the flag competitions and um, things like uh, the peer learning programs that we have. They're heavily involved in getting students uh, up to speed and setting up their computers to use in our um, teaching programs. Um, so they're a great resource for our students to be able to get together, uh, just hang out, build cool stuff, have fun. Um, that's really a lot of what it's about here for the clubs and associations. I'll say that we also have some uh, outstanding postgraduate programs here at the ANU, and I'll just quickly talk about them briefly here, but I, I'm, I, I, I've focused at this point on our undergraduate programs because I think that's many of you are considering uh, your studies here at the ANU for undergraduate programs, but I'll just point out that there are opportunities for you to go beyond those undergraduate programs into uh, our coursework master's programs, whether it's uh, Master of Computing or Advanced Computing, Master of Applied Data Analytics, Master of Machine Learning and Computer Vision and various graduate diplomas and graduate certificates in machine learning, computer vision, data analytics, data engineering, and so on. And of course, there is always the opportunity at the end of the day to go on to do uh, research study uh, for both the Master of Philosophy or the Doctor of Philosophy. Um, I will say that uh, there is a great opportunity to get some advanced standing from courses that you might take in your undergraduate programs into these masters and graduate programs. Um, so uh, if, it's, if it's something that interests you and you want to go a little bit beyond just a bachelor's degree here at the ANU, we can, we, you can transition and articulate into these programs from those bachelor's degrees uh, almost seamlessly. Okay, so um, I'm going to just put up a couple of, uh, put up this slide here before we go to questions, um, just to talk about uh, the uh, sessions that are happening through this week that you may be interested in attending. And I want to highlight a couple of sessions here uh, that might be of, uh, maybe of particular interest to you. Um, there is a session on Wednesday at 1.30 where you have the opportunity to ask questions of a computer science academic, Associate Professor Peter Huffner. Um, who is the convener of our Bachelor of Advanced, Com uh, Bachelor of Advanced Computing programs. Um, that's a great chance for you to ask what it is like to uh, study in that program and, and, and also to consider what research might look like in the study programs that we have at the ANU. And the other one that I will point out or highlight is the one on Thursday at 1.30, which is an opportunity not to talk to an academic, but to talk to an ANU computer science student. So there you'll get the real lowdown on what it is that they enjoy about um, being here at the ANU, where the value is for them and, and, and why they find it exciting to be studying here with us. Um, and I'm sure you'll get a very honest and um, uh, uh, I think very positive uh, response to any questions from, that you may offer, ask of them at that time. So um, at this point, I am happy to go to questions. Um, we do have some contact information, which I'll put on screen. Um, and then I'll come back to answer questions uh, in just a second. So uh, here's our uh, social media um, platform handle. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, here is some uh, information about uh, getting in touch with us here at the ANU. Now I'll just leave that for a moment. Um, we're going to transition to some questions. Uh, and I've got the Q&A box open here um, and I can start working on those unless Emily wants to direct me to some specific questions. Well, we're seeing some fantastic questions coming through, so it might be a good idea to just work down the line. Work from the top. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I'll answer this qu first question live. Will the BIT and the Bachelor of Advanced Computing be accredited with ACS Pass 2020? Yes, of course they will. 
Um, so we uh, pride ourselves on accrediting both, uh, all of our degree undergraduate programs. Um, the BIT, the Bachelor of Advanced Computing and the Bachelor of Software Engineering are, um, are, are accredited programs and will continue to be accredited, yes. Okay, um, in terms of computer architecture, what kinds of things are being taught? Is there ARM and RISC-V? Um, yes, of course, we um, teach not just um, Intel x86 architecture, uh, but we also get students exposed to ARM architectures. We have a course which uh, is one of our early courses on um, how programs execute on the machine. Um, and in that course, students get access to an ARM board that they can take home and play with themselves. So they actually get to use bare metal uh, hardware in that course um, and actually understand the, the ARM architecture up close and personal. Uh, RISC-V is an interesting thing. Um, RISC-V is a, a, is a new architecture. It's an open source architecture that's been proposed um, out of uh, the US at uh, uh, Berkeley. Um, and uh, I'm pleased to say that we actually have members of our staff in the, uh, members of our academic staff here in the school who are advisor. We have an advisor on the RISC-V community, uh, in the RISC-V community, Professor Steve Blackburn, and um, RISC-V is of, of, of interest to us uh, in our research as well. Um, so I hope that uh, answers that question for you. Um, if there are any more answers, uh, I'd be happy to, uh, um, uh, any more questions around that, I'd be happy to, to flesh out details. Uh, what are the core differences between the BIT and the BAC? Um, well, the BIT uh, is, has the same foundations as the BAC. So all of our programs have a core that they share in common. Uh, the first couple of years of study have a common core. Uh, and then they tend to specialize. So the BIT gives you a little bit more opportunity to pick electives outside of the school um, and also to work through the majors that are available in the BIT. Um, in the back, you go deeper. So there are specializations available in the BI in the back that allow you to go deeper into subject areas such as machine learning or computer vision or um, uh, 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 computer hardware or um, you know, system software or logic. Um, anyway, there's, there's any number of different opportunities to deepen your understanding in the back. Um, the BIT may not have quite the opportunity there because of course it's only a three year degree. Unless it transitions into being an honors year, then there's an opportunity to do much of what the back students would be able to do as, as well. So I hope that answers that question. Again, if there's any follow up questions, I'd be happy to answer those as well. What is ANU doing in terms of research and advancements of AI? Um, I am very pleased, as you saw at the beginning of my presentation, to note that um, the ANU is a leader. It's above world class in its research in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, we have researchers here who are working in the areas of planning and optimization. Uh, these are specialized areas of artificial intelligence that uh, use the machine to figure out the best way to solve a given problem. Um, to try and solve it optimally. Um, often optimal solution is an intractable problem in computer science. And so we have to use techniques that rely on AI or what are known as heuristics to solve those problems. Um, and we also have a, very, a leading uh, group in machine learning uh, with applications of machine learning into domains such as medicine, um, into domains such as computer vision, uh, into health informatics, um, any number of different application domains that machine learning can be applied to these days. Um, so uh, we are, we pride ourselves at being at the forefront worldwide. We are world class in, in the AI machine learning space. Pathways to study cybersecurity. That's a fantastic question. Um, we have now uh, built up um, a, a sequence of courses in our programs, which will, uh, a four course sequence effectively in our programs, which will take you through the foundations of cybersecurity into uh, software security. How do you find and, and uh, prevent vulnerabilities in, in software into network security? How do you both exploit and defend against exploits uh, in, in the computer network and into information security? And a lot of that is focused around um, cryptographic protocols and how we protect uh, communication of information uh, in, in cryptographic ways. So uh, there are great uh, courses that we have here. 
Um, and what's more, we have an interesting and unique relationship here at the ANU with the CoLab. The CoLab is a partnership between the Australian Signals Directorate and the Australian National University to build capacity for the nation in cybersecurity. And uh, our uh, students are, have opportunities to work closely with uh, the co within the CoLab, as well as to do research uh, within the CoLab as well. Um, we, ha we run a, uh, a, a number of programs in cybersecurity for students to do things in, in terms of capture the fl flag and hackathons. Um, and uh, there's op opportunities for you to get involved in those as well along the way. So I, I think we have uh, a great emerging now program in cybersecurity for students to study and you'll come out the other end of it with uh, really, really strong skills. Uh, our students coming out of our programs are working with some of the local uh, leaders in um, the cybersecurity space, companies like Pen10, um, uh, companies like Fifth Domain, um, and I'm very proud that our students are going on to successful careers in those, in those companies. Of course, our students also go on to careers with government, uh, and government uh, is looking to grow its capa capa capabilities, capacity in cybersecurity, uh, and so there's lots of opportunities there as well. I hope that answers that question. Um, if a student does a double major in physics and mathematics, would they be able to do a minor in quantum computing to tie in with quantum physics? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I think there's a great opportunity to do that. That's a very topical thing to be looking at doing now. Um, and I would hope that you can take the computing skills that you learn here, as well as the skills and, and, and uh, understanding that you gain from physics and mathematics to actually do cutting edge work in quantum computing. Um, so uh, I think that's a, a fabulous direction to explore, especially in this day and age. Quantum computing is, is really an emerging technology that is going to, I think, change things dramatically. I hope that answers that question. What are the courses of computer science at the ANU? Um, well, all of the programs that I've described to you are our computer science programs, our degree programs. Um, I think this question may be asking about specific individual courses um, and what those courses might entail. I can't go through the, the wide uh, plethora of courses that we have here at the ANU right now easily, but I can tell you that we have fundamental courses in programming across a range of programming paradigms, including functional and object oriented and parallel and uh, distributed, um, as well as courses in uh, operating systems and computer um, organization and architecture, uh, courses in machine learning, computer vision, um, planning, optimization, um, data analytics, docu document analysis. Um, I, I, there's a whole slew of courses that I could describe. I would encourage you to look at the programs and courses page of the ANU to get a sense of the various courses that we offer within computer science here. Um, that's just too many for me to enumerate at this point in time, but there's, there's, a, there's a good sample of them right there just off the top of my head. How much is open source and licensing taught and what kinds of operating system design courses are available? Um, so if you study here, you'll be doing a lot of your study within our computer labs, which are all uh, running the Linux operating system. And so that's an open source operating system. Um, we have historically had very strong uh, capabilities in the open source space. Um, if any of you know uh, what rsync is or what Samba is, um, there are uh, historic Long, long historic ties between the ANU and the open source communities. Um, these uh, platforms are very successful open source uh, pieces of software that have, have really been taken up around the world. And ANU is, is actually quite famous for that open source work. Um, our operating system courses um, give you an exposure to the fundamentals of operating systems. Um, and of course, once you start doing research, you can rapidly get into working with open source operating system design and operating system uh, fundamentals. Um, so I personally have a student right now who is working with a bunch of, uh, of uh, researchers here on improving um, fuzzing techniques for finding bugs in software, um, where he is actually working with a Linux operating system module that is making use of the underlying hardware tracing facilities to be able to guide and speed the uh, fuzzing process. So using hardware acceleration to do that. Um, and we have lots of opportunity for students to 
dig into, open the hood, open the bonnet on and dig in under the surface of uh, these systems and actually get their hands dirty and build things and interact with the, uh, the, the system software. So I think we have lots of opportunities for that here. I hope that answers that question. Uh, can I become a data scientist or machine learning engineer by Bachelor of IT or is it in the Bachelor of Advanced Computing? Um, our Bachelor of IT gives you the fundamentals. It gives you the underlying skills that you, you will need to become a data scientist. But if, as, as a, a three-year program, it doesn't have quite the opportunity to go as deep. Um, you would have that opportunity if you were to go into the Bachelor of Advanced Computing. Um, and aligned to that are courses that we have uh, taught into the uh, Bachelor of Advanced uh, of Bachelor of Advanced Data Analytics. Sorry, Applied Data Analytics, a BATA uh, degree. Um, that has courses that are available to students who are not just in the BATA program. So students can take courses like um, data wrangling and uh, data analysis and, and, and document analysis uh, that are required for the BATA but are just as, uh, just as much available to students in our other programs. So there's plenty of opportunity to explore your interest in that space if you want to do so, even from the BIT. Um, obviously, if you have the, the interest in going deep, uh, the, the fourth year is a, is a great way to do that if you were to do an honors year of the BIT. But you can always get a taste for things and then and make decisions along the way. So there's no locking in necessarily just because you choose the BIT to begin with. Uh, is the Bachelor of Applied Science, Applied Data Analytics degree designed for data scientists? Yes, that's the specifically, it's, its design is to get students right along the path to becoming a data scientist. So uh, uh, the answer to that question is, is a definite yes. What areas are available at the ANU where advanced computing R&D students can do research? Um, happy to say that there are more than I can again enumerate here. Um, there is a, uh, a, a range of research taking place in, um, uh, I'm getting a message that I can't read for some reason, so I'm not sh quite sure what that implies, whether we're out of time or something like that. It's, it's hidden behind uh, the panel at the top here. Uh, let me see if I can move that. Still plenty of time, Tony. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, uh, as I've mentioned, um, AI, machine learning, computer systems, programming languages, programming language implementation, um, parallel computing, uh, computational science. There are plenty of areas for doing research. And as a research institution, and one of Australia's leading research institutions, we pride ourselves on having a large number of options for students to do research in their degrees. What's the difference in the undergraduate degree in IT and CS um, at ANU? Well, as, as, as noted, all of our programs I consider to be cons computer science programs. That's sort of the broad brush of what we do. Um, the BIT, the Bachelor of IT, is just one of our programs within that broad brush of computer science. Um, so it does have, as I mentioned, a little more flexibility. Um, it's a three-year program rather than a four-year program, and that in combination with other degrees may make, uh, uh, make for more flexibility for study. So um, again, the foundations of, of all of our programs are much the same. The first couple of years of study are very, uh, very uh, uniformly the same across our degree programs, but then there's opportunity to branch out into the different directions in the later years of study. Specializations, um, I think I've talked about the specializations in the presentation. I hope that uh, that answered your question sufficiently. Um, fields of computer science that we excel in, I think I've also answered that question. Um, AI, machine learning, uh, software, um, and when I say software, I don't just mean software engineering, but I mean software in the, in the sense of building software, the underlying software platforms, the, the operating systems, the, the programming languages that we use and, and the programming platforms that we use to build software are fields that we excel in. Why should you choose ANU for computer science over any other? Um, that's a fabulous question. Um, and it's what, probably the hardest one to answer because of course there are many fabulous computer science programs around the place. Um, 
I will say that the ANU is a, a unique institution in Australia. That's a one, one reason to choose the ANU. We have very close ties with government. Uh, we have uh, lots of opportunities to interact with uh, uh, great um, academics and researchers across the ANU uh, who excel in their fields. Uh, we have some of the leading uh, disciplines, including computer science, but one of some of the leading um, disciplines in Australia. And so it gives you that opportunity to really combine computing with other disciplines, to do multi multidisciplinary study where you're engaging with uh, some of the world's best philosophers or some of the world's best social scientists or some of the world's best physicists or astronomers while also doing computing with some of the world's best computer scientists. So um, I think that that's a great combination um, and many institutions would love to have the breadth of opportunity to engage across a wide variety of leading disciplines uh, that we have here at the ANU. So I think that's, that's one of the great reasons to come here. How's advanced computing different from software engineering? Um, advanced computing uh, is really about getting students to the cutting edge and beyond of computing uh, so that they're actually not just um, understanding how things work, but actually getting to the point where they can innovate in technology to build new technologies, the technologies of the, of the future. Uh, software engineering is focused more on um, how we build um, reliable software today and the techniques that we can use to do that. It, it, it is focused on understanding what it means to work in teams and to uh, get a project across the line on time and on spec so that it actually does what the customer intends or asks for you to deliver. Um, and so there's a, a divergence there, if you like, of, of advanced computing veering towards more the research questions questions of building new technologies to support um, any number of different activities, not just software development, but including software development. Whereas the software engineering program is really focused on how we build reliable software today in teams that works and, 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 and is delivered on time. Um, so that's, that's a, a characterization, if you like, of the difference between those programs. Do I mean the ba Bachelor of Advanced Computing is better than the Bachelor of IT? No, I do not. <laughs> Um, I don't mean that at all. Um, the BIT is a uh, degree that's positioned to allow you to marry it to study in lots of other programs. So um, if you have a love of music um, and you also want to study music at the ANU, you can combine that with the BIT most flexibly to have a combined flexible double degree. Um, the Bachelor of Advanced Computing doesn't quite have the flexibility that we, you would you would have if you're doing the BIT, but um, it's, there's no way that one is better than the other. It's just a question of, of what it is that you're trying to achieve in your studies here. Majors and specializations in the BIT. Okay, so the difference between a major and a specialization, a major is actually an eight course sequence of study. Um, a specialization is a four course sequence of study that leads you into the advanced courses in our program. A major doesn't necessarily get you to, into the advanced courses. So um, it gives you an opportunity to say that you've, uh, you've worked in a particular major in the, in the computing field, um, whereas the specialization is intended to get you deep into your study. Uh, so eight courses for the major, four courses for the specialization, and if you want to see what that looks like, I again, point you to the programs and courses website where you can see uh, what the majors and specializations actually entail and the courses that are involved in those, uh, in those particular uh, focus study uh, plans. I hope that answers that question. How does humanity play a role with computer science at the ANU? Um, uh, wow, that's a, that's a fabulous question. Um, well, humans and computing, that's, that's what we do. <laughs> Everything we do with computers involves a human at some point, whether it's to build the system or to use the system or to deploy the system or to fix the system. Um, but there is also the question I think here about the ways in which you can take computing and deploy it into domains in the humanities like music or arts or social sciences um, or philosophy. Uh, so we have um, some very interesting engagements across the university with uh, the humanities. Um, I can speak to um, both the, uh, the 3A Institute here at the ANU, which um, is led by Professor Genevieve Bell, um, which is uh, looking at how uh, artificial intelligence um, 
impacts our lives, impacts humanity. 3AI is about bringing um, AI into the space where it actually is doing uh, what it's intended to do as a benefit for humans as opposed to um, a downside. Um, so 3AI stands for, for um, assurance, autonomy, um, and the interactions of, of autonomous systems, of uh, artificial intelligence systems with humans in order to assure that they're actually doing the, the things that they're intended to achieve. Um, we also have a project here that spans uh, the university called the uh, Humanizing Machine Intelligence Project, um, which is a collaboration with people in philosophy um, and other areas of the university where they really are grappling with this particular issue of um, AI as it is be beginning to impact our lives um, and how do we ensure that it, it, it does have positive impact as opposed to negative impact in our lives. Um, so I, I'd encourage you to look at both the website for the 3A Institute and also the website for the Humanizing Machine Intelligence uh, Project, um, which is uh, collaborations across the university. Could I please compare and contrast the Bachelor of Applied Data Analytics program and the Bachelor of Statistics? They have quite a bit in common. Okay, so I think the, the primary difference here is that the, the Applied Data Analytics program will give you a grounding in the underlying computer science skills that you need to analyze data. Um, so the, the Bachelor of Statistics will be much more focused on the underlying mathematics of um, modeling and, um, and analysis of data. Um, the Applied Data Analytics program includes some of those um, subjects, um, but it also has a focus on the technologies that you need to actually be able to wrangle large amounts of data. How do you curate it? How do you store it? How do you analyze it? How do you get it into shape for applying statistical models to it? Um, so there's, there's, there's a whole, whole uh, piece of the engineering of data, which is covered in the Applied Data Analytics program, which is not necessarily present in the, in the statistics program. Cybersecurity, um, practical skills. Uh, you'll have opportunities to look at cybersecurity in any of our programs. Um, and I've talked a little bit about cybersecurity already, so I hope that that answers your questions. Um, we have courses that you'll be able to take that are both practical and, and enhance your technical skills um, in any of our degrees. So you don't need to pick your degree program uh, for, for that opportunity. It'll be available to you um, in any of our degree programs. Internship opportunities. Um, we do have an internship program. Um, I've mentioned Tech Launcher, which is, is not specifically an internship program in that students don't go out and work in the workplace um, on those projects. They're just interacting with uh, clients, partners um, on, on specific projects of interest to those partners. Uh, but we do have internship opportunities where we actually place students into uh, the workplace. Um, that is a study program, so it is, is fully curated and, and, um, and fully um, accredited. Uh, you will have in that program uh, a mentor associated with you who will allow you to um, uh, take to them questions about how to, how to work in the workplace. They have um, some sort of workplace readiness exercises and things that they do with the students that are in the internship program, as well as having the experience to then work with Within, the, within a given workplace um, and understand how your skills can be translated into that workplace. So um, again, internship programs, I would look for some uh, information. Uh, perhaps we can um, find a way to get you that information on the internships program more directly. So I'll, I'll make a note of that and perhaps um, our team can get the internships information to you. I think we have some, some rather um, interesting brochures that will describe that for you. <coughs> Data analytics involving so much to do with arts and humanities, does that mean it allows, allows for more effective courses, more elective courses to be picked from other colleges? Um, that's not actually quite the case. It's more that it, it, it exposes you to um, material in, in the uh, College of Business and Economics um, and in statistics. Um, so there's, uh, and then into, into the humanities, into the arts and sciences uh, uh, humanities. So, um, it's more about how you take data analytics into domains um, and it's built into those degree programs, um, into that degree program. 
Um, it's not that it necessarily gives you more elective courses that you can pick, although there are electives available there, of course, um, just as there are uh, in the other degree programs. For a web designer career, um, well, uh, it really depends what you're intending to achieve. Um, so web design uh, is something that you will learn about or can learn about with any of our degree programs. Um, if you want a career in that, uh, these days it's important that you have programming skills. Um, websites are often driven and run on uh, JavaScript, which is um, a programming language that you need to understand and be able to program in. So. Um, it's not just the design aspects, but it's also the underlying technologies that drive the delivery of websites, uh, which you would want to be learning in any of our degree programs. Um, so I won't, I won't point at a particular degree program. Um, maybe starting with the BIT is one place to start um, with that uh, particular goal in mind. Um, but noting that uh, there's nothing stopping you doing web design in any of our programs. What's an honors degree? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so an honours degree is a is a degree in which you have undertaken a a, a, a year long research project, so two semester long research project, um, usually in collaboration with one of our um, research academics. Um, so if you have a degree which has a built in honours program, if it's a, a something like our Bachelor of Advanced Computing Honours. Um, that requires that you do that one year research project in the degree to achieve the honours degree. Um, it's also possible to add an honours year to our three year degrees. So the BARTA and the, and the BIT, the Bachelor of Advanced Data Analytics, Applied Data Analytics and the um, uh, Bachelor of Information Technology uh, both have an optional honours year which is added on after the three year degree. Um, and again, that involves a one year research project um, which will lead to an honours uh, designation in your degree. With the Bachelor of IT, is it possible to get a major in cybersecurity and data science? Uh, that's an interesting question. I suspect it probably is. Um, and I don't think that there's anything preventing you from doing that. Um, so long as you have the electives available to you to be able to get the courses that you need for those, for those uh, majors. Um, so I'd, I'd have to look at the details of, as to whether you can combine both of those things easily, um, but that's something you'd need to figure out in a study plan. Um, but I think it's possible. For the advanced computing R&D course, which majors allow you to do the machine learning specialization? It says online it's incompatible with the advanced intelligent systems major. Um, Yes, yeah, so that's the reason for that is that they have many courses in common. So um, the intention is that you are going to get one or the other. Um, and uh, majors generally are intended for the BIT students, the specializations are for the BAC students. Um, so uh, we, tr we try to stream those slightly separately. Um, but eff effectively, you're getting exposed to much of the same material in those in those specializations and majors. And so but for that reason, we can't give you both of them for doing just the same set of courses. <clears throat> Are there any requirements about EAL and physics scores in the ATAR for the Bachelor of Software Engineering Honours? Um, no, I do not believe so. Um, in the UX system, the lowest selection rank for Bachelor of Computing Honours Bachelor of Advanced Computing or Bachelor of Software Engineering is around 90, not 85, which is correct. Well, um, as of a few weeks ago, I would have said 90 was correct. Um, but the university in response to the COVID crisis has actually lowered the ATAR scores in recognition of the difficulties that students are facing uh, in, the, at, in these times. Um, so this is an intent to um, not to lower the, 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 the standard of our degree programs, but to recognize that students are going through some difficult study times um, and in particular, um, may face difficulties in their final year with respect to uh, their year 12 studies. So um, the ATAR has been lowered in the last few weeks by the ANU uh, to recognize that fact. Um, and so what, what I've pre presented to you here are the current ATAR scores that are required for our program. 
So Tony, just jumping in for a second. Yep. Uh, we'll probably have time for about one more question. And there is a question which I have seen appear quite frequently that um, we might be able to yep. cover off a bunch of questions for people. And that's around, uh, do you need any prior knowledge before doing any of the computer science degrees? And how can you best prepare before starting at ANU? That's a great question. Um, so we, the, the prior knowledge we have um, uh, is relatively small. Um, so we're looking for students who are able to analyze problems, um, to think, um, in, in, think carefully about um, solutions to problems, um, who are comfortable with detail. <laughs> Uh, details, are, it's, it's a bit of a, it's, it's, it's one of those things that when you deal with a computer, the machine is not always going to do what you think it's going to do. And you have to understand when it says no. <laughs> when the machine says no, you have to be able to figure out what particular detail is it that the machine is, um, is saying no for. Um, we do have requirements in mathematics. Um, so it's maths methods. Um, as, the, as the base level of expectation there. And that's just because um, we do have uh, need for some basic mathematics through our degree programs. Um, so the computer is a mathematical construct in many ways. And so we need to be able to come at it from a mathematical perspective sometimes. Um, other than that, there is no expectation that you have had any experience in computer science before. Um, and I'm very happy to say that some of our best students come into computer science completely green. They've not, they've not really done any programming at all. And they just fall in love with it in that first year. Um, and then go on and be into very successful um, study here at the ANU in computer science. So our courses are structured deliberately not to assume any prior knowledge. And in fact, um, we, we, we enjoy having the opportunity to open people's eyes to the, the joy of computing, the, the wonders that can be experienced if you study computer science. So um, no, no real specifics other than what those that are listed in the pro program requirements. Fantastic. So to everyone who didn't have a chance to get your questions answered today, we strongly encourage you to get in contact with us. You'll see the contact details on the screen. Or as mentioned earlier in the presentation, you can come along to some of the other sessions that we'll be holding later in the week. But thank you all for coming. I hope you've all walked away from this with a lot deeper understanding about what we offer in computer science at ANU. And thank you kindly to Tony as well for presenting today. Thank you. Thank you for having me here.